All right, all. I'm a minute late, but not too late. So good morning. I had to find my room key. I'm, as you can tell, I'm not at home. Okay, here we go. We get some nice chaos and din here. I like that. Uh, so good morning, good morning. Um, I get a good connection here. I'm gonna find a place to squirrel myself away so not bug too many people in the fact that I'll be talking to you for the next, uh, you know, hour or so. Oh, check me out. <gasps> I have a fun place where I can hang out. Let me do this. So good morning, Rodney. And good morning, Dennis. Uh, B. Grammy and Secret Light Shih Tzu. Teresa Teal Robinson. Awesome. Hopefully you can hear me. There's a, actually, you know what I can do here? Let me see this. I am totally being like, I'm turning down the volume in the main um, television here just for us. So all you can hear is me. And yeah, so good morning. Um, I am, good morning, Becky, nice to see you. Uh, seeing me, here we go. There we go, a little bit more later. So as you can tell, I am not at home. We had an impromptu uh, trip to Frantic City, as I like to call it, because that's what they called it on the, um, on the, what do you call it? The Flintstones. Here, let me prop you up for a sec. This is gonna be wacky, wonky, until I do this. There we go. Can you hear me okay? If somebody could give me a heads up, just give me a mic check. I put on my earbuds, not like I'm hearing you, but just because there's a microphone attached, and I bet if I do this, that might able, oh, yuck. Oh, oh, you guys, this is definitely a, um, a TikTok live for um, flexibility, because, okay, Erin, thank you. I have to share, so I'm in the lobby of our hotel, and this is the breakfast area, and my, I just literally, put my sleeve in something sticky. I'm hoping, I'm hoping it's a maple, and I use the term, it's a breakfast syrup, but good morning. Yeah, so I'm here for you for the next hour from 9.30 to 10.30 Eastern, and then check me out. I gave us all like a half hour break. If you're on the Destination Decluttered mailing list and you're able to make it, you know that I'm doing a, um, you know that I'm doing a uh, workshop today. Now the workshop is going to be a little bit more put together than this. I promised my husband that he, he promised me he'd be out of bed and doing something while I am doing the uh, workshop from the room and it'll be a little less chaotic. But you know what? This is how we learn to be flexible. Good morning Judy. Nice to see you and Lori and Alma and for those of you who don't know me, my name is Beth. I am a decluttering life coach and my coaching is called Destination Decluttered. Now why destination, and it's so funny because I'm at a destination, is because to me a destination means it's someplace you want to go to. Kind of like a destination wedding or just a travel destination is having something in your mind's eye that you're like, ooh, that could be fun. Oh, I'd like to get to there. Um, and this is my idea, is when, when you're excited about your destination, clutter-wise, declutter-wise, and otherwise, because I'm a certified life coach, you're gonna be more likely to do the things to get you there, okay? And I wanna help you do that, okay? I wanna help you, I am here to help you, if you want help, if you need help, uh, to kind of get unstuck. If you don't know where you're heading, let's make a, you know, let's, I can give you some tips on how to devise your a destination. If you are here and you think, think you don't know how to get there, let's just calm down your nervous system, everybody. I could probably do this myself. A nice few, three free, you know, deep breaths, reset the nervous system. And then maybe when you do that, when you calm down your body and your nervous system, what that does is it allows your brain to get out of kind of fight or flight mode. Like, oh my God, I don't know when this is, you know, like I was even earlier, just a minute or two ago, so gross, um, at the beginning of this TikTok live because I was, you know, there was a little bit chaotic. Now that things are slowed down, I take a deep breath and I can focus. I can focus on helping you and even just telling you about that notion of um, focusing to help calm down your nervous system might be something, that might be a thing you need. Susan Porter, morning from finally, sunny finally Nashville. Yeah, I am in gray, not as cold as it was, gray and kind of windy Atlantic City, New Jersey. But when we go home today, it's supposed to be like 80 degrees. So we'll hang out here for a while. I have a few things to do. And then we head back up. So um, 
let me help you plan the road trip called your, your trip from where you are now to your destination decluttered. How does that sound? I think it sounds kind of fun. I love doing these things because that's why. It's so funny because I actually started my kind of alternative career um, as a travel writer and I've published books on road tripping and I even pitched a book, frankly, to, um, to get, um, to create a pitch for a book that was like a life coaching guide to getting to where you want to go to based on the concepts of road tripping. I didn't do much with it because I don't know if I want to write a book. Um, good morning from Michigan. So here's, here's where it goes. I am here to help you. Here I am. I am ready and waiting. This is kind of like the universe. When you say that you want some help, when you say I could use some help, I often feel like the, the universe conspires to bring you some help. As Mr. Rogers once said, look for the helpers, and I am one of the helpers. So there's that. So how can I help you with this? Um, you got a clutter problem? If you got a problem, you all solve it. A clutter problem, you all solve it. And what I basically want to do is give you the opportunity to say, hey, um, this is what I'm thinking of, but I don't know what to do. Two heads are better than one, often, okay? So if you like what you're hearing, you might want to consider um, following me here on TikTok. I'll be here for the next, you know, 40 minutes or so. And um, you know what? I may even move because I don't want to disrupt the people behind me. Um, but you tell me, how can I help you? Maybe it's just giving you a moment to think of where is um, where is your uh, destination? Um, Strong Silver Soul Sister says, speaking of books, I just borrowed an audio book called Nobody Wants Your Shit by Messy Condo. <laughs> hey, you know what? True words. True words that were never spoken. Nobody wants, I mean, <laughs> think about it. We're here talking about clutter because you've got stuff you don't even want and it's your stuff. Now, the funny thing is, is somebody may want your stuff. It's just, it's probably going to be somebody you don't know, though. Okay? So, but that is very funny. Um, yeah, anything to reinforce, you know what? It's just stuff. It's just stuff. Okay? So, Mar says, dealing with nightstand clutter, meds, hair stuff, books, junk, lol. Okay. One of the things I think is very handy is, now, I will say this. I am, I understand the, what am I trying to say? I understand the benefits of containers. But I will, um, I will say that sort through your stuff first. Do you really need all that stuff? Now, I have something on my thing like this. This is, this is just the one I'm bringing up now. But I have something like this at the side of my, my bed so I can just throw, you know, my tissues and my night. Oh, there's a quarter in here. <laughs> you see, you find money when you're decluttering. Um, I find my, uh, uh, put all my stuff in it and just zip it. But I know I only have the stuff that I need. So I always say you've got to sort it before you store it. So if you're looking for storage, I suggest going through the stuff and say, do I really need all this stuff? Do I use it here? Has it gone out of date? Has stuff accumulated? OK. Um, uh, dealing with, OK. Uh, so hopefully that will help. Is sort through your stuff, everybody, even if it's not your thing. Sort through your stuff first. And then find a storage unit that makes it easier for you to just find your things and also to maybe tuck it away. Maybe does your, does your nightstand have a drawer? You know, um, I'm going to move myself because I see some people eating breakfast and I want to be mindful of their breakfasting. Um, funny thing is, as I turned down the, the sound of the TV and now I, um, I turned down the sound of the TV and now I don't have that to mask me. And I'm in a public space and there's probably some oops.
do this. Hello, hello. Oops. I hear you. Mm -mm -mm. Okay. Uh, okay. How about now? How about now? Thumbs ups? Yeah, okay. So, Becky, you can hear me. Thank you. Sorry, you guys. This is what... Um... Ha, ha, ha. This, okay, there we go. And we're back. Thank you, Aaron. Yes, so technical difficulties. You know what? This is when you do things on the road. It's like a, it, it totally is a live show, not on, in the studio. If you think about it, my home is a bit like studio. Now we're live on the road. Anything can happen. Why, my God, there's Elvis. He just left the building. <laughs> okay, so what I said, okay, thank you, CJ. I'll, I'll do it really quickly. When you are, I know, here I was. If, if somebody read lips, they could see what I was doing. We're talking about um, photographs of nieces and nephews of anybody you know. What I want to offer to you is a couple of things. First of all, it doesn't mean you don't love the person if you decide to throw away the photo. It doesn't mean you're a bad person. Yes, flexible grace, live not memorex, exactly Susan Porter, I love it. Um, it does not mean you don't love the person if you throw away a photo of them. However, so you, throwing away the photos is an option. As I was, I, you might have seen my hand movements, but what I say is you've got a photo. A photo came from two machines. It came from a camera machine and it came from a printing machine. And it spit out this thing called a piece of paper with colors on it that looks like somebody you know. It's just a piece of paper. Now I know pictures can be just a piece of paper or not. You have, you have emotions attached to it, right? So you've got the photo, you've got the emotions, and right now they're like this. What I want to suggest to you is the notion of you have the ability to extract, to separate, to distance the love you have for your nieces and nephews, which lives in here and, and you see them and you see how much they've grown. You can remove and keep the love for them and kind of just pull the love out of the, <laughs> out of the, um, the pictures so that they become, you know, just like a, a pepper packet. You know, this is just a pepper packet. No, this is the one that Elvis gave me. It's special. We imbue things with meaning, but we can take the meaning back and put it back into our hearts. And then once you realize that you can separate those things, then you can decide what you want to do with it. As I said, throwing them away is an option. If you have an entire, um, if you have an entire uh, drawer full and you want to use that drawer for something else. But the other thing too, might, which might be kind of fun, and you know your you know, stuff better than I do, is I have some photos of my nieces and nephews and I'm thinking it would be kind of fun to make a, 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 an envelope. I'm a, a big fan of the big envelopes. Make it an envelope of, for each one of them and putting their photos in that I got. So when they're our age, when they are even in their 20s and 30s and have kids of their own, that they have photos to show their families, you know? So that might be something. Yeah, Cat Mama's saying make an album for Christmas. But the thing I want to be mindful of is this. The stuff that you're struggling with clutter-wise, kind of making a decision that makes it feel better for you and also doesn't inadvertently burden somebody else with clutter. Because I guess if, you, if, if you're like me, you may have inherited things from people that you don't necessarily want, but you feel somewhat obligated to, to do something with. Let's try to be the, the generation, the 2024 generation that kind of breaks that and makes a solution that feels good. Maybe what you do is um, you take a picture of those little kid photos while you, before you throw them away so that you have a digital version of them and then you can share the digital version with your nieces and nephews so they have them for themselves without having the physical ones. I think that's kind of a cool idea. Instead of creating more clutter from the clutter, you know. Um, there we go, yeah, user 9739 is saying this is important. I'm trying to take a photo um, of the photos before throwing the printouts, you know, so that can do it. Yeah, and, and completely, Susan, it's so true. Susan Porter is saying, no longer keeping the photos given to me if I don't know who's in the picture or the story. Notice when you don't know the story in it, it just becomes people. It just becomes dots on a page. So notice that. The only thing that's giving that photo meaning is what your brain says it means. And if your brain doesn't know what it means, it becomes worthless. Okay? Um, and here's the thing. And Akariya Tantra says, I beg to differ. I feel the pictures are too sentimental a category to just throw away. And you are 100% totally within your rights to have your opinions. I'm just saying there are options out there. And if hanging on to the photos is weighing somebody down and knowing they have the ability to, um, to, to, to throw them away and not feel like a bad person and not feel shamed into it and guilted and, no, that's too, you can't do that. 
this might make somebody feel lighter saying, okay, I'm okay with throwing these away and it's allowed and I'm not going to get in trouble and nobody's going to make me feel bad about my decision. I'm not going to make you feel bad about your decision to keeping photos. I keep a, 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 a lot of photos myself. When I'm, in my, um, when I'm in my office, when you do, like my studio, I guess you could call it now that I'm live and, and remote, um, when I'm in my office, when you look in the background, there's, there's two closets there. One of them has clothes in it. The other one is basically all photographs totes of photographs because I'm a photograph person and I was when all you could do was take paper photos. So I know 100% about what it's like to save photos. I'm just saying I have also thrown away photos. I have mailed photos to people of them when they were younger because I, they have kids now and they would like to see their wacky dad with his punk rock haircut. So there are many things you can do. Okay. There we go. I love it. User Debbie 2 says, I do a digital scrapbook with my photos. So much less room to store on a DVD. You know? Yeah. And here's the deal. Um, it says, um, somebody said, uh, throwing photos or greeting cards that were lovely is hard. Of course it's going to hard. You know why it's hard? This, the hard stuff is the stuff that makes you feel feelings. Making decisions that make you feel feelings. Surface clutter, no big deal. Sentimental, s stored clutter, a little bit harder. Sentimental clutter, a little bit more of a struggle. So that's why I say, meet yourself where you're at. If you feel not good about throwing them away, don't throw them away. If you feel like you want to throw them away, there's also nothing wrong with it, okay? So, yes, we don't love them less because of throwing away their greeting card or photo. That's really what I want to say is throwing away the item, giving away the item, regifting the item, selling the item does not mean you don't love the person who gave it to you, okay? When you make yourself feel better, you're gonna do better. Yeah, everybody's got their own interests, so no big deal, yeah. Um, there we go, calendars as gifts. My mom's all black and whites, no names, who are they? Yeah, I, ooh, um, I, I'm going through the same thing, Cat Mama. I have two huge, heavy photo albums that a cousin gave me of people from the 19, 1800s that are allegedly our family, but nobody, nobody um, documented who they were, so I don't know who these people are. If I saw them in a in an in antique store, they would mean nothing to me, yet allegedly there's one th thin line that says you're related to these people and suddenly there's a connection and I feel obligated to hang on to these and find out who they are. So if you are, stale, if you are saving some stuff, please um, put on the back of the pictures what the year it was and who they are so somebody from the future generations knows. All right? C.C. Fitzhenry says, I love a digital picture frame. I think that's a great idea. We gave one to my mother once. I have no idea where it is. <laughs> Yep. Uh huh. And here's here's what I want to say is the stories live in our hearts. If you you know, I know it can be heartbreaking. Trust me. If I lost my things, I would go through some grieving. But at the end of the day, you can you can remember people in your heart. All right. Okay. Loopy two p.m. is saying thank you, Beth, and all. Hit that roadblock yesterday while decluttering. I know my daughter won't want them. Um, you can ask her if she wants them. She's probably overwhelmed with her own stuff, so the answer can be no. You know, um, and you know, there's just different ways. That, the reason I show up like this is to give you permission to make a decision that feels good to you. Okay, you did, and she says no. Cool, good to know. Don't. I love that you're not going to guilt her on them. But notice, she doesn't even want them, and they're her kids. So you are not a bad person for throwing them in the trash. You can say, "I love you," put it in the trash. "I love you," put it in the trash. "I love you," and bring all the love out of it. You can extract the love, put it back in you and now it just turns into a piece of paper with stuff on it. It is something to get useful. It's a way of approaching your stuff that you may just may seem unfamiliar to you because you're so used to thinking, I can't do that. I show up to, to give you ideas that there are different things you can do and I am always gonna be team, which one makes you feel better in the long term? In the short term, it could be painful, but then in the long term, you're like, you know what? I'm so glad I don't have as many. Maybe you save half the photos. Maybe you pick out every other one, you know? Yeah, um, Delane is saying, oh, somebody here on TikTok, I saved the video. I have to watch the rest of it, but I found it when I was in the car and I couldn't um, listen to it. I got my mother's china and I'll never use it. Okay. You can give it away. You can donate it. You can see if you can sell it. If you know you'll never use it, that's okay. It wasn't yours to begin with. It was your mom's. Hopefully your mom enjoyed it and hopefully your mom used it. You are under no obligation to enjoy somebody else's stuff unless you want to. Now, the funny thing is, is I used to be so resistant 
to my, my parents' china. It was my grandmother's. It's all floral and little and fussy, and I don't like floral and fussy. But then what I found out was, oh, look, it's got some colors in it that my Fiesta wear has, and I want to have that connection. This was a big deal. This china was a big deal to my family. So I am, I am happily now the caretaker of the, of the china set, and I have used it. I've used it when I've had friends over for, like, tacos, using it. It doesn't have to be for a formal occasion. It can be, and it doesn't have to be, okay? Um, Cat Mama says, my dad had a bunch of 8 millimeter tapes. Should I transfer to DVD? Expensive. I don't know. Uh, do you want to spend the money? Do you know what's on them? Would it be a good investment in your money to find out what's on them? You're living your life okay not knowing what's on those, those, those 8 millimeter things, you know? The other thing, too, is I will say about the expensive part of it, is I got a bunch of stuff digitized myself um, on, you know, I sent it away to like Scan Cafe or some other place. They have sales. So look for around a holiday, around Christmas, around some, some sorts of holidays. They sometimes have like a 50% off sale. You know, if you don't want to know what's on them, you never need to know. Or you could be like, ooh, it's worth my money to find out what's on these. It's totally up to you, right? All right. So Akaraya says, I live amongst narcissists, so they have no sentimental bones because their frontal cortex isn't developed. Notice that and act accordingly. Yeah, there are some people that don't have the sentimental. The other, other, others of us, we, we you know, make up a story about a paper plate. You know, oh, that poor paper plate. <laughs> yeah, you know. And here's an interesting thing. I will say, kind of in the notion of chunking things down, and yes, there's something sticky on this thin place too, um, is the mother's china. China, if you think about it, and this is one of the tools for, I don't even know where to put my stuff down. Um, this is one of the tools in your toolkit for any kind of decluttering, is taking an entire, a thing that looks too big and overwhelming, I have the entire China set. Think about it, chunking it down. I bet you have dinner plates. I'm thinking you have cups and saucers. I'm thinking you have like a bowl, and I'm thinking you have like a, a, a sandwich plate or a, a bread plate. I think of this because I used to work in Makasa, and I used to work at, um, at uh, uh, Pier 1, and we used to sell sets of china, so I know they typically have those things. They may have more. My parents' china is so old-fashioned, it literally has bullion cups. It's like a teacup with a handle on each side. Notice you can break that apart. Maybe you want to save um, just the dinner plates. Maybe you'll use, let's say this is me, maybe I'll use the smaller plates for desserts, you know? Um, you can break it apart, and maybe you only use part of the, of the, um, of the set. Maybe that will make you feel good. It's an idea. Again, these are all just options. You can, you know, I give you an option and you can choose any of them, none of them, some of them, or just kind of like, in, you know, listen to them, kind of let them simmer down and simmer and see how it feels. And you do you. I just want to absolve you of the guilt, the shame, the obligation that's weighing you down. Because if you love your stuff, you're not even gonna question it. You dig your stuff, you keep it. And there's very little emotion in it because you're just like, yep, love it. I don't have to. It's the, it's the push me, pull you. It's the, it's the, it's the, actually, this is a free, I'm probably going to use this in an upcoming TikTok video. It's like when you have something, this is my thought. Let me know how you feel about this. So I've talked about this idea of you've got a traffic signal in your body. You've got the green light up the top where your heart is. You've got the red light where you don't want the stuff down there where your body removes the things, if you know what I mean. And then in the middle, in the middle right here is yellow. You know what the yellow is? Yellow is, the, the yellow light is just like when you're driving a car. It's do I speed up and go through it? Do I slow down and stop? That tension of what do I do here? That should I stay or should I go? It's like, it's like two things. I think these are really important things to think about with the stuff that you want, your the stuff that you call clutter. Basically, I think the stuff you, I think the stuff that you think is clutter is stuff that you secretly want to get rid of, but you're afraid to that your body is telling you, no, you don't need it. Your, your soul is telling you you don't need it, but your head has a story about why you have to keep it. It's trying to convince you to keep something you don't want. Notice when you're talking yourself into keeping something, whereas if you had permission and you weren't gonna get in trouble, I bet you would easily release more things. It's like, it's like driving forward to your destination, but with one foot on the gas and one foot, one foot on the brake, okay? Yeah, okay, and here's the thing. If I worked for Mikasa, I probably know the value of an antique china set as a whole. Yeah, and for the most part, sadly, it's pretty much very little. 
but I'm not Google. The wonderful thing is you can look up your pattern online and see what people are selling it for, or more so, not what they're selling it for, what they're paying for it. Now, we will say this, the number one place for decades has always been Replacements Limited. They are a warehouse. I have been there. It's massive. They have pretty much probably a, a piece of, you know, china and dinnerware from everything in life. What they sell it for is not what you're going to get. So, but do some investigation. See if it's worth anything. Maybe you have, and this is the crazy thing. Maybe you have a set of dishes that um, somebody's worth willing to pay a lot of money for because they want to complete their set. You know? Yeah, exactly. Oh, it, it's so funny because I'm like, bingo, clutter is the stuff you don't want. If you love something, it's not clutter. And I'm like, yes, yes. And then I look and it's you, Erin. <laughs> of course. Great minds think alike, huh? Yeah, yeah. Okay, Adelia says, and as soon as I get rid of it, I need it. Notice that story. My brain self-sabotages. Okay, so if you think you need it, don't get rid of it. If you think you're going to use it, but then ask yourself. Give, give yourself, I bet you have examples, Adelia. This is a fun thing. If we were in court, and I've got a microphone in court, I don't know why. If we were in court, I would ask you for examples of when, specific examples of when you got rid of something and you needed it. Write down all the examples of when that happened. But also, think of all the other things you've gotten rid of that you've never had to. So what was different between those two things? Learn from what you did in the past so you can do it better the next time. Okay? Yes, and Sammy, Sam T406, and my husband used to say, so did my dad, and I say it too. My husband used to say, things are only worth what someone else is willing to pay for it. Let me repeat that, because if you're thinking you're going to make money from your stuff, I'm holding on to something I don't want, but it might be worth something, is... Things are only worth what somebody else is willing to pay for it. Somebody is willing to give you money. If nobody wants it, they're not going to give you your money. So true. I remember going antiquing with my dad back in the day. We would go to Brimfield because I'm from Massachusetts. And I remember being like, oh, my God, that's crazy. They, they want, you know, $100 for one of these gra glass doorknobs. That Grammy's house has glass doorknobs. And my dad's like, just because they're asking it doesn't mean that you're going to get their, you know, that's what they want. It doesn't mean they're going to get it. You can ask for what you want. It may not be that you're going to get it. But the more you ask for what you want, the more likelihood you're going to get it. Okay. So, yeah. There we go. My steamer, but now I use my shower. You know? Um, interesting. Uh, Moi says, was going to throw away new packaging boxes, but decided months later to donate. Yeah. Making a decision that feels good to you. That's what I'm all about, is getting in touch with yourself and making a decision about pretty much everything, but let's start with clutter that feels good to you, okay? Yeah, and of course, we are, I have an example of that. I think I did a TikTok video of it. Marlsey Webb says, uh, I once threw an AC adapter away after years of not using it and then needed it shortly thereafter. Yep, it's probably going to happen. So this is not 100%, this is not 100%, but just think of all the things that you have donated and released and thrown away and give, given away and sold that you don't even remember because you don't even need it anymore. But it may happen that you need it. Okay. Is there something else you can use instead? Can you borrow one from somebody? Can you find it in a thrift store? Can you just buy another cheaper one? Oh, too small. I live in Brimfields. Stephanie, okay. So up in May and, what is it? May and July and September, you're, you must be hunkered down or hopefully you're selling spots, spots for people to park on your, your lawn, huh? There we go. Yeah, I love this. I didn't need it, but able to find a use to donate. I was hemming and hawing to use it. Hem, ha, hem, ha. Yeah, hemming and hawing. What do I want to do? Yes, and uh, Mariah, totally good way to find value is to check the sold listings on eBay. But here's the thing, too. I want to be just mindful of that. I think that's a great thing. I've done that myself. But just remember, especially if you see somebody who paid a wicked lot for something, that that may be that, pers that person who was willing to pay that money now has that thing. So there may not be somebody else who wants it. It can't hurt to try. So try it. If it works, yay. But if it doesn't, say, okay, I didn't get that money. Now what am I going to do with it? It's even like having a, gro a, a, a garage sale. You can try. You can put out the stuff that people are going to buy it. If people don't want it, I have then packed up all my stuff and donated it. <laughs> and then, I'll be honest with you, in years past, I would have a garage sale. I would pack up the stuff. I would donate it to the Goodwill. And then, I swear to God, on the way home from that, I would stop at somebody else's garage sale. <laughs> I don't know if I bought anything, but I was like, man, I have a, I have a cycle, okay? Yeah, I love it. Gossamer Wing says, um, donating alleviates a lot of the push-pull feelings for me. Yes, donating. When you feel good, here's what I'm going to reinforce. When you feel good about the decision you're making, there's no push-pull. It's green light. 
it means green light. Let's drive towards that donation place. So paying attention to what you're feeling good, and if you're not feeling good, why are you not feeling good about it? And I want to offer that you probably have a story in your head that's making you feel a feeling that's causing that push me, pull you, kind of, you know, gas and brake type of thing. Okay? Whoop. Okay, let me back this up. I got some stuff here, and really quick, it's top of the hour. Okay, it's 10.03. And my name is Beth, Destination Declutter, Decluttering Life Coach. If we haven't met before, I'm going to be here for the next 27 minutes. And then I go upstairs, set myself up, and then I'm doing a, um, a, a workshop for those of you on the Destination Declutter mailing list. You know how to get that. Um, those of you who are not... <laughs> Those of you who are not on the Destination Declutter email mailing list, you will have the opportunity to see the recording of it, um, for, or, and, and you sign up for the, excuse me. Those of you who sign up for the mailing list today, I don't have time to coordinate all the other stuff, but you will get the um, recording. You'll have access, as well as everybody who's at it, for 30 days if you're on the mailing list. So if that sounds like fun, this workshop is going to be about how to basically create a roadmap for your day that feels more like a road trip and less like a commute. I love it. I used to call it breeze blocking. I am transitioning into calling it road mapping because it's just, just makes so much more sense. And I'm going to teach that skill to you so that by noontime today, you're going to have a skill that you can practice that can change your life because it gives you the time and the space and the way to do the things. Okay. Um, but also, if you like what you're hearing, follow my page, destinationdeclutter.com slash join is how you get on the mailing list. If you want me to be your one-on-one -on -one coach, I do that. Um, you can do that on the mail on the website as well. DestinationDeclutter.com. Work with me is a tab there. Um, but I'm here for the next X many minutes, 26 minutes, um, to help you with your clutter, so you feel better and you're moving forward in a way that feels good. Okay. And yes, we are collectively on for the Zoom this this morning. Okay. So um, Jenny Heard is saying I have clothes in many sizes and I'm currently losing weight. Awesome. Awesome for all of that. I don't know what to get rid of. I say this, don't get rid of anything right away, but what you can do is you can categorize it so it's easier for you to dress your body. This is what I say. You have, you have categories of your clothes. You have the clothes that currently fit your body today. You have the clothes that you think you might fit in later, and you have the clothes that you used to fit in, but you don't. How about those three categories? The stuff that you don't fit into anymore because it's too big, Maybe you pack that away. You pull it out of you pull it out of circulation. You put it in a tote. You label the tote with the size and the dates, and you store it out of the way of your everyday wearing. And then you also separate out the ones that you don't fit into yet. And maybe you put them in a different drawer. Maybe you hang them in a different part of the um, of the closet. But notice what well, you're saying. I am currently losing weight. Like you're in a process. You're moving towards a different sized body. So maybe what you do is you save the ones that you want to fit into and you look at them as motivation to kind of keep you on track. Give yourself a while to adjust to this. Getting used to your body being a different size takes a physical and emotional adjustment. So I don't, I don't necessarily, I mean, I say get rid of any of the clothes you don't like and you wouldn't like it regardless of the size. Donate those ones, but the ones you really like, keep them for a while until your body gets used to being this size. Okay, notice what you're doing. You're calming down your nervous system and you're allowing it to feel safe in the new environment. I hope that helps. I love this. Um, Strong Silver Soul Sister says, since I started decluttering, I feel like it's a necessary continuum. You know why, she says? Because it feels so good. It's so freeing. Because it's so freeing. When you realize how free you are from your stuff, I will share with you guys that a couple of days ago when I was at home, there's a book that I've been trying to get through. It's one of those ones, supposed to be good for you, should be good for my coaching, and I just dread reading it. It's an unpleasant book and I paid money for it, I paid full price. Many people have read it, they liked it, but every time I looked at it, my heart dropped. Oh, I guess I should read that book. I didn't read it, I kept on avoiding it. So you know what I did? The other morning, I took it out of my house, I put it into somebody else's free library, because I know somebody else is gonna be so psyched to find this popular book free in somebody's library. I tell you, I practically skipped home from that donation because I was absolved of having to do something. I told myself it was okay not to finish that book. So it is freeing to release the things that weigh you down, okay? I love it, Kate in Texas is saying, my spring has been full of travel and family visiting, off track, but hope to start again in May 1st. Yeah, my winter was, and I'm thinking more, because I'm pretty much decluttered, but my 
health journey, my eating well and not drinking as much and exercising more, boy did I get off track over the winter because we were traveling and eating and drinking too much. Now that I'm back on track, it's the season of me doing better and when I do better, I feel better. So yeah, there we go. Um, yeah, okay, Jenny Heard, also my closet is tiny. I haven't figured out how to create more closet space. Okay, create more closet space by removing the stuff, oops, by removing the stuff that you don't want and storing it somewhere else. Okay, and yes, yay for me getting rid of the book. See, I um, do this. I do these things. Um, and you can too. Um, so what I want to say is, yep, there we go. Um, all right, garden my, garden my eyes. Here, I hit something. Here, let me, uh, I hit a wrong button here. Something's stuck here. I'm trying to do something here. Cancel. Sorry, I don't know if you guys can still hear me, but I can't move things. Uh, there we go. Try that. Let's try this. Okay, there we go. Oh my goodness. <sighs> okay, unstable connection. Here, I'm gonna, I'm gonna. This is really weird. I'm gonna take a screenshot of this so I can report it because I don't know what's going on. If you guys can hear me, um, if you guys can hear me, I'm going to sign off and I'm going to sign right back on again, okay? I'll be right back because this, there's something going on here. Oh, there we go. Oh my goodness, that was a pain in my butt. Ah, okay, cool. I'm glad you can hear me. Thank you. Thank you for staying with me through those dark times, okay? There was something popped up on my screen and I couldn't get it and I couldn't scroll it. Ah, technology. I mean, technology is allowing us to talk, but okay, here we go. Thank you so much, you guys. I appreciate it. Okay, um, what do we have going over here? Okay. I love it. Uh, Garden in My Eyes says, I'm going through boxes packed in 2015. I haven't missed this stuff and kids don't want it. Buy stuff. I love it. Yeah, okay. Um, Akariah, what I want to offer to you is, yes, the, the sentimental stuff about your dad is going to be creating an emotional thing. There is no timeline. There is no race to the end. There's no expectation. Do not put an expectation of time as far as you're going to go through these things. The time to do that is when you feel emotionally ready. And not ready for the entire thing, but emotionally ready even to just dip your toe. It's supposed to be a toe. This is like the toe of my hand. Dip your toe in and do a little bit at a time, okay? But notice, it's all about the nervous system. It's all about feeling ready to do something. If you don't feel ready, you're not going to do it. So, yeah, grief is hard, but there's no timeline, okay? There's no timeline. So take it easy on yourself, okay? I love it. Strong Silver Soul Sister. Jinx. Be easy with yourself. We're both saying it at the same time. Okay? And that goes for everybody. There's levels of clutter. There's sentiment. There's store. There, excuse me. There's surface. Sentiment. Stored. Stored is kind of stored is kind of a combo. Stored is when you, you are not making the decisions because you don't have any room for other things. Stored clutter can be a combo of surface and sentimental. And it's getting the balance right on those that allows you, and then the practice of working with your surface and your stored gives you the strength and the, the skill set you need that makes it going through your sentimental things easier. It really does. Yeah. So practice on the easy things. Practice, practice, practice making decisions that feel good for yourself on the easy things, and notice that what you're doing is you're creating a nervous system safety. Your nervous system's, oh look, I threw that away and I didn't die. I didn't get in trouble by donating that thing that I've been hanging on to that told me a bad story every time I looked at it. Okay? Oh, I love this one. I love this one. Um, user 68335, etc. says, my children are all grown, they moved out but left their stuff, what do I do? If they are grown and they have moved out, they come and get their stuff. This is your house. This is your house, they are grown ups now. Don't, don't be the keeper of their stuff. If it's not making you feel good, if you don't want it in your house anymore, have a conversation with them. Because the thing is too, notice that they're living their lives. They, don't they probably don't want it, but it's easier for them to, live in, to keep it in their, your house. If you don't want it, this is but where boundaries kind of come into play. If you don't want their stuff in your house, it's up to you to tell them, hey, time to come get your stuff. Time to get your stuff. 
and give them a timeline. Don't be like, oh yeah, whenever. But get clear with what you want. What's your destination? I want their stuff out of my house by a certain date. And that certain date is one that's gonna feel good to you. Do you wanna give them till Christmas? Do you wanna give them a year? Do you wanna give them a week, a day, a month? Notice what feels right to you and start that conversation. They're probably helping, hoping. Kind of like little kids, we used to be like, Mom, if she didn't say anything, maybe she didn't notice. Maybe she doesn't notice my stuff is still in the basement. Okay? Um, but yes, I love it. Um, okay, there you go. What I say is, you, I'm here for you. I'm not here for them. If you don't want that stuff in your house, do something about it. This is the, that's about as tough love as I get. You can do something about it. If you don't like what's going on with the stuff in your house, you can do something about it. Whether you do it is completely up to you, but I'm letting you know that there are things you can do to remove the items that you don't want in your house and get them somewhere else. Whether that's donating them, whether it's calling up or texting your kids and saying, hey, guess what? This is not your storage space anymore. Come, come and get it, come and get it, come and get it. Okay. <laughs> I saw this husband and wife had Sunday dinners and kids left with a box each time. Yeah, that's an option, you know. There we go. Yes, they think our house is a storage bin and I have OCD. Okay. Well, tell them. Let them know. Hey, guess what? Our house is not a storage bin anymore. It may have been for a while back then, but now today it is no longer a storage bin. Come and get your shit. You know, if my mother said that to me, I'd be like, oh, okay, cool. I'll make a plan. Now they may be like, but mom, I don't have any place. I'm moving around. You know, it's a case-by-case -case basis, but you're doing that to make it easier on them, but you're doing it at the expense of you feeling easy in your place, okay? Yeah, and even if they, if, here's a fun thing, have a dinner, have them each box ID their stuff and take them with them and then they leave, and even if they don't want it, you can tell them to leave it, you can tell them to leave with their stuff and then don't, they can donate it somewhere. Get them used to decluttering, you know? Um, I need to take stuff from my mom's, but I don't have room in my small apartment. Okay. You can make a plan for that stuff. You can even, you know, you can even say to your mother, I want these items, but I don't have a place to. You can have a conversation about the stuff you want from her house, if you really want it, and maybe she would be cool with housing it, temporarily storing it. But having the conversation is the most important part, and that can also be the most difficult part. So... It can be scary to ask for what you want. It can be. But man, is it a shortcut to getting to what you want. Is taking, as I like to say, that scary shortcut. You know what I want? I want your stuff out of my house. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to have the scary shortcut, which is going to be the uncomfortable conversation with my kids saying, hey, come get your stuff. You know? And yeah, you can move forward because of their stuff. You know? But notice... You make decisions on a daily basis that either keep you stuck with clutter, yours or somebody else's, or you can make a decision that is doing something different that helps you move forward, you know? Um, and trust me, Breeb81, I love this, is saying, I had a storage unit for seven years from downsizing. It feels so good. Chuck Mangione, it feels so good to have it all gone. You know what probably also feels so good? One of the questions I ask my potential clients when we do the consultation, if we're going to be working together as coach and uh, client or not, is kind of a who, what, when, where, why, and one of the things, and a bunch of other questions, and one of the standard questions is, how does your clutter affect how you spend your money? I was trying to get the phrasing right. How does your clutter um, uh, affect how you spend your money? Can you imagine how much money you spent for seven years monthly in a storage unit. Monthly times 12 times seven. Think of now what you can do with that money you're saving, okay? Um, yeah, scary to work with neg the neglectful narcissist because they don't care. You know what, this isn't about them, it's about you and how you interact with them. If they don't care, you know they don't care, you're not gonna make them care. What can you do differently knowing that's how they're wired, okay? Yeah. So good to hear this because I'm scared to tell my kids again. Okay, Bigel88, imagine I'm standing there with you. I'll tell your kids with love and compassion and fun, get your shit out of the house. This is not your house, this is your mom's house. I would have that conversation. What would you, what would, can you imagine what I would say to them? I wouldn't be mean about it, but it's like, hey, we're all, here's the funny thing, we're all adults now, aren't we? 
let's have an adult conversation. You know? And here's the interesting thing too is what are you scared of? What are you scared that's gonna happen? Notice this, you just brought up one of the great things that we uncover with coaching. We don't do something because we're afraid something bad's gonna happen. Okay? What are you afraid is going to happen if you have a conversation with your kids about their stuff in the house? Notice, a fear will keep you from doing things that if you weren't afraid, you would just do it. You would have the conversation. You know? Yeah, even that. So breathe, just so you know, guys. So I, I tend to repeat the, the, um, the questions and the answers that come across here because when these TikTok lives are downloaded and uploaded to YouTube, the, the comments don't carry. This is also for the people who are walking around their houses doing decluttering as we're on the TikTok Live. So it just popped away, but Breeb just said, um, yes, it was about $5,000. My clutter cost me $5,000. And now, not only am I not spending that every month, that's my, my part, I'm ad-libbing on that one, and one less thing to remember to pay or even think about. <gasps> One less thing to remember, oh my God, of that kind of, oh, that's right, I have to do it. See how decluttering can save you money. If you had gotten decluttered even twice as soon as you did, I mean, I'm not shaming you, I'm just saying, you could have saved 2,500 bucks. Yeah, an argument. Yeah, yeah, you know what? But if you're, okay, so I'm afraid of an argument with my kids about their stuff. But here's the thing I wanna have you get better at, and maybe you need to work on this a little bit before you do that, is standing up for yourself and saying, this is what I want. Getting, it's, it's, it can be uncomfortable. It can be unusual because we are not built this way, especially as I'm inferring you're a woman, I could be totally grossly off. But I know that women in societies are told to be selfless, to do everything for their kids regardless. It's noble to not care for yourself. And I say to a certain amount, F that, you know? So I say, get used to asking for what you want. Practice it on little things, and when you feel stronger about asking for what you want and holding your ground, if they start to try to get into an argument and just say, no, no, this is for me, this is my place, this is my house, that is your stuff, put it in your house. And when you don't rise to their occasion of having an argument, there's no argument. It can be uncomfortable, but standing your ground to say, this is what I want, you know? So, yeah, you're not used to doing that. You're not used to doing it. You can start to get used to doing it. Just because you haven't done it in the past doesn't mean you can't start now saying, this is what I want. When I coach people, this is how I coach. So if this isn't what you're looking for, it might not be. But I think it's really good to get in touch with yourself and say, hey, wait a minute. I'm feeling crappy because of somebody else's stuff. I can't change. I can do something different about this. I can let them know. You know? So... Yep, you could just drop it at their house, but I will say that's a bit passive aggressive. I think it's the better, it's, it's the more uncomfortable route to have a conversation with them because you're standing up for yourself. Yeah, you could ask for Mother's Day. Mother's Day is a nice gimme card. Hey, Mother's Day is coming up next weekend. Get your shit out of my house. <laughs> but you're not helping them by avoiding the difficult conversations. If they're only 23 years old, somebody said 23. I kind of, these things are scrolling by really fast they're gonna to need to deal with their own stuff throughout their lives. You are allowing them to get practice at it right now with you. And you're gonna probably be a little bit flexible with them. You're gonna come up with a thing. You're gonna make a plan that feels good, but insisting that they follow through with a plan is part of growing up. So I'm there with you. I'm there with you, I seriously am. I know it's not easy. So practice on some of the easy things. Get in touch with what you, how you want your home to look how you want it to function, and how you want to feel in your home. And you can do things about that. Okay? Yeah, GGX2000 is doing it. Box by box, I put all my girl stuff in a pile in the basement and say, go through this, it's garbage night. You know? Um, Skittles 360K says, can I throw away my kid's stuff that is not in my garage? It's your garage, you can do whatever you want. How do you want to, how, you know, you know that you know the dynamic. See, this is the thing. I can't give you, I can only give you permission to do whatever the heck you want to do. If you want to do that, it's how, if that's how you want to approach it, do it. But examine how the different ways you can get to places. You can get to that decluttered way in a way of throwing away all their stuff. Will that have negative consequences on your relationship with your kids? 
will they not trust you because you threw away the stuff without asking them? You know? So just notice there's different ways. Yeah, I love it. Um, when I send something to my daughter, says Kate in Texas, when I send something to my daughter, I put beanie babies in it. She says, I see what you're doing, and hopefully she laughs, you know. Um, uh, Catherine, okay, I'm, answer I'm answering you. Family thinks I'm lazy, are you? On SSDA for drug-resistant depression, hoard help, okay. Um, I'm glad you're on depression meds. Um, I, think, I think you're doing the right thing. You gotta work with your nervous system and your internal bodies before anything else, okay? You've been seen and heard. Um, hope that helps, okay? Um, all right, my husband is more strict, but I'm not. Okay, you've got good cop, bad cop. Why? He can be more strict and he doesn't feel bad about it. Why don't you be more strict? Because it's gonna make you feel better in your house when your kid's stuff is not in it, okay? Work with yourself first. Everybody, this applies to everybody. Work with, with, with yourself. You're not used to it, it may feel weird, but it's a skill you can practice. The more you practice it, you get better at it. The less weird it feels, the more normal it feels to say, hey, wait a minute, what do I want to happen here? You know what I want? I have it written down, I put it on a, a piece of paper on one of my calendar things and I have it sticking up in front of me. What do I want to happen here? What do I want to happen? And when I listen to myself, and I'm, I, I, I am now where I make that stuff happen. Why do you think I'm in Atlantic City, New Jersey now? Now this is not my ideal place, but there was something I wanted to happen last night and it happened. And more cool things happened because I said, what do I want to happen? Okay, how can we get there? <laughs> One of the ways we're getting there is by going and spending an overnight in Atlantic City, New Jersey. You know, I wouldn't come down here for just, you know, fun, but you know. So yeah, you gotta heal yourself first. Everybody, yeah, you gotta heal yourself. You gotta take care of yourself. And when you take care of yourself and you build up your own internal strength, it's like working on a muscle. You start with the small stuff, you build it up, you get better, you get better, better, and then you get more confident to ask for bigger things you want, okay? Melissa is asking, um, how do you re release the emotional attachment to your clutter, okay? Be gal 88 and just know, I am with you. I am so with you, okay? Um, so two things, because we've only got about five minutes left and then I have to go upstairs and do a little Rearrange, I've got to get the sticky stuff off of my, um, off of my sleeve here. Uh, Melissa's asking, how do you release the emotional attachment to your clutter? Notice that word, attachment. Here's a piece of clutter. Here's some emotion. I have attached the emotion to the clutter. Well, how can you remorse it? You can realize that the emotion is a different thing from the clutter. The clutter is just an item in the world. The emotion is something you feel when you see that item. When you see it, it tells you a story that makes you feel a feeling. This is the emotion. It's just emotion that's bringing me over. This is just a thing that triggers, that is a visual trigger to say to your brain, oh, that's that thing that that friend I used to have at work gave me. That reminds me of her. You can extract it. You can practice with the easy things extracting the story from the item, doing something with the item, and then noticing how it feels afterwards. Does that feel good? Hey, that feels pretty good. You might wanna do that more. Build it up a little bit at a time. Build up, expand your nervous system capacity to feel okay with items, removing the, the story from the items so you can remove the item from your life. I hope that helps, okay? I love it. I love it, strong silver soul sister. Always a pleasure to see you. Um, have a fantabulous day yourself. All right, um, I can't see somebody's name, but it says, what's the Zoom workshop gonna be like? I'll let you know, because it's gonna start at 11 Eastern for those of you on the Destination Decluttered email mailing list. If you're not on the mailing list now, if you hop on it, if you get on it today, you and everybody else on the mailing list, you will receive link to the recording of the workshop. So here's what the workshop is gonna be. It is a working workshop. So you're gonna get the most out of this workshop if you show up with basically something as easy as a piece of paper, a couple of pieces of paper, and a pen. Now, I will say, if you really wanna get into it, I use a spiral bound notebook, and I use a pen and some highlighters. Now, I will show you that process, but I don't want you to think, oh, I don't have the right ingredients, I can't show up. If you have something to write on and something to write with, you're all set. Even if you don't and you just listen, that's gonna help. 
And what we do is we create a roadmap for your, your week by starting with the day, by starting with your destination. And we walk through the process of calming down the nervous system, writing down the things, chunking down the items, putting them on your calendar in a way that feels more like a road trip and less like a commute. When you set up your road trip for a day and you say, I'm starting here and I'm ending there, how does it feel with the pace that I'm going at? Have I factored in stops along the way where I can, you know, I can pee or I can rest or I can stretch or I can get a snack? When you're not overbooking yourself and you're enjoying the pace of the day, you're more likely to go through the day, feel good about it, write down where you've been so you remind yourself that it worked, and then you do it for the next day and the next day. And I will walk you through that in real time so that by the end of the session, if you work along with me, by 12.05 today, you're going to at least have a concept that you can work at for this week, and you'll have some things written down, even for just your tomorrow, your Monday, maybe even later today. Maybe you will have roughed in a week. It depends on you. And then I highly recommend, while you're in that kind of knowledge bubble of the workshop, is give yourself a little time afterwards to kind of work through the rest of the week, even roughly, and notice how this approach, this skill I am teaching you, can increase the amount of things you do but it feels better, so it doesn't feel like more. It actually feels easy. Showing up for the things you want to do, showing up for the things you have to do, but showing up to the things you want to do to take care of yourself, to change your life, and working all of these things in. It's not only doing one thing and then stopping it, then only doing another. We chunk it down, we mix it up, we make it fun, like a road trip, instead of a commute, okay? So, if that sounds like fun, that's the Destination Decluttered email mailing list workshop that starts in a half an hour. I will not be here. I'll be up in our room, um, and we're going to go through it in real time. If any of this has been of help to you or of interest, please consider liking my TikTok page here, Destination Decluttered. I am Beth. I'm a decluttering life coach. So I am here. I do these TikTok lives. I have a couple of them um, scheduled. I'm kind of in the middle of a marathon of doing one every day. So if you like what you're hearing, um, on the front of my TikTok page is a pinned a uh, pinned video that says the, the schedule. Uh, the other thing is too, is if you want to get on the mailing list, destinationdecluttered.com slash join, hop on it that way. And then lastly, but bestly, is I am a one-on-one -on -one coach. I coach people all across the country because we meet on Zoom. I have a 10 session package, so that's the only thing I offer. It is paid coaching, and it's you and me, an hour a week, just you and me, on a day of the week and time of the day that works for the both of us. And all we do is focus on you, where you are, where you want to go, and how to get there. And we create that roadmap, and we notice when you hit roadblocks, and we don't judge, but we, get, I create, a, we create a toolkit together. I share my toolkit with you of skills and processes and concrete things to do when you get stuck so that you know how to move forward. Now, how you get to be a client of mine is we do a consultation first where we can decide if what you're struggling with is something I can help you with. If coaching seems like it's going to work, we move on. It's as easy as that. I can start. We can't start this week because I'm busy, but the following week, the first week of May, and just so you know, this Wednesday is actually the beginning of May, so next week is the full first week of May. Just think, if you had coaching for 10 weeks from then, it would be just into the summer, how much better you would feel in your home, in your head, in your heart if you got coaching. All right? I'm going to leave you with that because i got to go get ready for the thing. Hope this helped. Always a pleasure. Thank you for... Um, being patient with me as we work through the technical difficulties. That was awesome, and I will see you soon, okay? Um, I have to sign off, and I'll see you in a bit. Bye.